But we do know is that the risk is now at a level where it's never been in history as far as I'm concerned because we have never had a crisis, financial crisis, a debt crisis of this magnitude before. We never had bubbles of this magnitude before globally. It's existed in certain countries in the past, but, but not across the world. This is why, you know, there's no one to save you. Welcome back to Liberty and Finance. We are delighted and privileged to have a first time guest today. Egon von Greyers is the chairman and founder of Matterhorn Asset Management. He joins us this Friday, October 20th, 2023. Egon, thank you for coming on Liberty and Finance this first time. I look forward to our discussion. Our mutual uh, friend and, and your uh, working associate, um, Matthew Piepenberg has been with us several times, interviewed by my son Elijah on our channel, and it's our first time to be able to have you as a as a guest here. Our our subscribers and viewers are eagerly awaiting uh, your perspectives on many of the things that are on their mind and concerning them about our world today, especially their financial lives. And um, you're widely followed. You have a long uh, history, a long reputation, and a great. Uh, expertise. Your most recent article, the, a 1987 crash in stocks with a golden dawn for oil and gold, draws parallels between what we are seeing setting up right now in major markets, not only the stock market, the economies, inflation and money printing, and oil and other uh, commodities of essential use as what we've seen in the past. And you draw the parallels of how those things played out and how you foresee this playing out in our current environment. Uh, certainly most uh, recently, we've seen this new conflict, new escalation of conflict in the Middle East that generally in the past always signals a uh, interruption a disruption in the world's oil supply, as well as a concern about uh, geopolitical instability in general. Could we start there and uh, help us understand where you see parallels between what happened in oil in the past versus what's happening right now. Well, you know, w wars uh, all, always ha have a common factor, and, and normally over time, wars are linked to debt, of course. Um, governments very often, uh, or leaders, start a war when they're under pressure uh, financially, because then they can print more money um, that they don't have. And um, then they have a reason they can explain it to, to their people that uh, you know, obviously we need to win this war and we need a lot of funds. So that's that's co uh, common. And, and then was, wars are always very often religious, which we're now seeing clearly. Uh, with it, you know, I've, I've, I've been around for, for quite a few years and I've, I've seen so many conflicts in the Middle East and they will never end, uh, sadly, um, uh, or unlikely to end, I, I would say. Uh, and then linked to that in, in modern times, um, energy, of course, uh, and oil has, has always been part of wars also. And now, since you start asking about oil, um, you know, we're, we're looking at, um, in the Middle East, there, we have the, the Strait of Hormuz, uh, where um, most of the Middle East, almost all of the Middle Eastern oil has to go through. And that's a very narrow passage between Dubai uh, and Iran. And uh, that's about um, 22 million barrels a year going through that, which is about 25% of annual oil supply. Uh, and um, if this war escalates, then um, we are likely um, to, we could, well, not likely, we could very well see Iran uh, uh, closing the Strait of Hormuz. Of course, the US is going to try to stop it, but it, it's it's not very difficult to stop that because Iran is such, in such a good strategic position there on the side of it, um, and and uh, therefore, uh, and they would probably get the support of Russia also. So, 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 so that's how, if this conflict escalates, um, I could easily see that happening. And that will be, of course, um, economically uh, a massive blow for the world. Uh, and then um, it would also escalate the war, of course. So, um, and, and the risk is here uh, that this develops into global conflict. It is already, uh, but still limited in two regions. And obviously we all hope that it will say that, 
But, you know, the sad thing is, and this is my main concern, is that uh, the superpowers, and here we're talking about primarily the U.S., um, in, in my view, you know, they're, 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 the only solution here is sending money and, and sending weapons. I mean, that's what they've done to, the, uh, to Ukraine. Um, and um, now they're doing the same to, to Israel. You know, you, you uh, and uh, no war can be resolved by money or weapons. Sure, you can win a war by 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 killing everybody around you and and bombing everything to pieces, um, but that's not not really winning. And uh, but what is sad is that, you know, first of all, there is not a single statesman in the West, um, uh, and sadly, the the um, uh, biggest well, economy in the world, the U.S., has, has now got a leader who, who is too old and not capable of, of running the country. Uh, and we don't even know. We know we, we not, can guess, but we don't know exactly who's running the country because they're not accountable, the ones who are actually taking the decisions below him. Um, and so, but you have Biden and you have all, and then the European leaders, they're just followed by uh, the U.S. And, uh, they, they have no, no say of their own. There's not a single statesman there either. Um, and, that, uh, and therefore, we, we have a situation uh, when there is not uh, a single uh, uh, country or leader that takes the initiative to make peace here. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the, but instead of uh, instead they're sending weapons and, and, and money. And you take Ukraine, half of the weapons get lost. Someone else. Um, takes care of them, and, the, and a lot of the money gets uh, also finds its way through nets of corruption, etc. So, so, um, and now we'll, we'll have a similar thing in Israel. So, so this is this is you know this is why you know yeah I was born right at the end of the the World War Two, and of course I didn't see the build up to that. But I can see the build up to this now. You know, you start with a small war, you start with economic uh, problems in the world, uh, um, and then another war starts, uh, uh, and then, uh, you know, nations take side, and no one attempts um, seriously to find a peaceful solution. And, and you can see how this can escalate, and, and no one knows where it will lead to. But this is my great fear. And, I'm, you know, I have for 25 years been talking about the risk of economic, economic collapse. I mean, I could see that clearly. And, and I think even today, uh, a lot of people can see it. Um, but the, the geopolitical side, you know, how that escalates is harder to forecast. Although we are in now, in the, this it, Era now is an era where, where you know the, the, we, we have war cycles. I'm not a, an expert of war cycles, but I've been studying it, um, and and clearly, so that war cycles are part of the end of an era, and that's what we're in now. So it's a it's a pretty dire time uh, time for the world, and you know the, the the people obviously need to protect themselves, but protecting yourself financially is one thing, but protecting yourself physically is is totally different thing. However, uh, wars seem to be connected in multiple ways to our financial lives. Uh, it's been said all wars are bankers' wars. You mentioned the geopolitical ulterior motives of leaders who are find themselves in trouble trying to shore up their political position by instigating or escalating wars and rallying their people to, you know, let's support the fatherland, let's support me as a leader, etc. You don't want to change horses in the middle of the stream. Can you draw the connection now for us, as you did in your article, between uh, wars and the financial uh, situation we find ourselves in as well? Yes, well, well, Obviously, that wars are costly, incredibly costly. Um, and um, if you take the U.S., uh, was already bankrupt be before these two wars started. You know, and, and when now they re need to uh, raise uh, hundreds of billions just to finance these wars, there is no money around. There, there ain't no money. They haven't got any money, and 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 you know nobody's asking where is the money coming from. Oh, we got we can afford to finance two wars. I mean that's what Yellen said. Um, no problem at all. They can't. Uh, and and but, but you know so how do they deal with it? Money printing, of course. Just issue more debt. 
but you know the U.S. has said it was financed primarily because it's the, the dollar is the reserve currency of the world, and people have been investing in dollars for 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 you now many decades uh, and holding the, re, the reserve assets in dollars. I think that time has passed, um, uh, and. Uh, but now, of course, fewer and fewer states or sovereign states are prepared to hold uh, U.S. treasuries. And we, we see country after country reducing the, uh, the level of, of U.S. treasuries. Um, and so we are now, and on top of that, the U.S. is, of course, increasing the deficits with no chance of financing them um, uh, outside of the U.S. So what they do, well, first they issue the debt, print the money. Uh, and then they buy their own debt paper uh, because no one else is going to buy U.S. treasuries. You know, so we have a vicious circle here, so which which will mean that the dollar at some point will become worthless, and 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 so will treasury debt. I mean, I wouldn't touch bonds in a, any country, but certainly not U.S. bonds. Um, uh, and the, the the world hasn't discovered that yet. This is a sad thing. People are very late in discovering anything, including golds, which we're both interested in as a means of wealth preservation. People buy um, gold, sadly, uh, often when it goes high. Not nobody buys when it goes down and is cheap. You know, this when we started buying gold in a bigger way in two thousand two uh, at three hundred dollars, it was it was unloved and undervalued. Um, and and now it's still unloved and undervalued, and there's still not more than half a percent of world financial assets uh, in gold. Uh, so it's got a long way to go. But but you know again, so so that's the the the, the wars have to be financed, and and that is always uh, in history um, uh, been the case. And uh, 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 that that governments at that time it's accepted by the people because it's a crisis situation that that the debt goes up. To you know, could be even two, three hundred percent of GDP temporarily. But you know, U.S. debt has been going up for years, uh, and and uh, in all cases, it's only whatever it is, one hundred and twenty percent of GDP. Um, uh, and uh, but um, now it's going to escalate further, and and this is just going to precipitate the, uh, the the fall of the U.S. economy <laughs> and the fall of the U.S. government. And you know, the talking about reserve assets i we have uh, seen most central banks of course holding the dollar as a reserve asset now when the us confiscates dollar holdings of high other major states like they've done with russia and will do whenever they don't like your country with with any other country who the hell wants to hold uh, their reserve asset in, in dollars that can be confiscated at any time? So people will flee away from dollar uh, as a reserve asset. And, and what I can see in coming years is, is gold becoming the the, uh, the, the the reserve asset of choice that, that uh, central banks will hold the reserves in uh, rather than dollars. So that in itself will, of course, create a very... Um, very high demand for gold, um, and obviously uh, the market couldn't cope with satisfying that demand at current prices. So we are talking about a major revaluation over gold over time. That's not going to happen overnight. Um, you know, it's a, it'll be a gradual process. I don't believe in in a reset overnight. I never believed in a reset. Things don't happen that way, um, uh, and and um, therefore, but over time. As more and more central banks start investing in gold, and we've seen it already in the last few years, central banks are continuing to buy gold, mainly in the east. Most of the western ones are not buying it, but in the east they are, and, and that trend is going to accelerate, in my view. You mentioned earlier in this uh, discussion uh, the plight of not only the dollar, but the U.S. Treasury bonds uh, as holders of those realize that that uh, the, the U.S. is bankrupt and is no longer able to service its debt, et cetera, et cetera, other than through the monetization of money printing that you mentioned. Can you talk to us about what are the natural, naturally predictable outcomes of the failure of confidence in the bonds of the U.S., on perhaps on banks, on pension plans, on, on individuals, et cetera? 
Well, it will clearly be disastrous. And, and you know, if you add to that um, the derivative market, uh, but most financial transactions have an element of derivatives in them. And a lot of transactions have a lot of derivatives in them. I mean, a, a, a lot of uh, funds, et cetera, have no real, real assets or real paper in them. They have just uh, a synthetic ones created by derivatives. Um, and of course, um, so you're not talking about only a, a global debt of 330 trillion or so. You are, you are, and I've written about this, you were talking about, it could be, you know, the total derivatives, nobody knows what they are because you you have this shadow market and you have um, a hard set of balance sheets, et cetera. But, you know, in my estimate, it could, the, the derivatives could certainly be one and a half trillion or more, maybe up to two. And that's really what you're looking at here that has to unwind at some point um, if, if the debt market comes under pressure, and if the U.S. Treasuries come under pressure, um, and and so if, the, if the, those derivatives will, at some point, uh, have to be saved, if you want, by, by by central banks, but they will issue even more money to buy to save the banks and to buy derivative, etc. Uh, and that's why, and this is why you see how. Uh, how exponential growth or exponential collapse can happen so quickly. Um, I think we're not there yet, but uh, but that can come uh, out of the blue. Um, you know, I'm not. Uh, I don't want to be a prophet of gloom and doom, and I'm, I'm because nobody knows what's going to happen, um, or or how it's going to happen, or when it's going to happen. But we do know is that the risk is now at a level where it's uh, never been in history as far as I'm concerned, because we have never had a a crisis, um, financial crisis, a debt crisis of this magnitude before. We never had bubbles of this magnitude before globally. It's existed in certain countries in the past, but but not across the world. uh, and this is why, you know, there's no one to save you. You know, sure, in the past, if Argentina went under, or 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 um, uh, some South American country, or, or uh, uh, some East European country, etc., then then it could be saved um, by other uh, sovereign states. Now, there's no one big enough to save. Well, first of all, you got you got the U.S. No one can save the U.S. Um, the, the the Ponzi scheme is finished, and you know, 2008 was a rehearsal. 2000 or 2006-9, if you want, was a rehearsal, um, and and miraculously they managed to delay the the, the problem for another few years um, or quite a long time, you know, 15 years. Uh, but now it's back again, in my view, uh, and um, this time I don't believe that money printing will save it. So so we we are in for a very vicious uh, time. Now, and as I said, we don't know when. All we know is that the risk is there. It's going to happen. It could happen tomorrow. It could take a year. It could take five years or whatever. Um, but the only thing we know is that the people who can, they should try to uh, pr- protect their ass- the assets that they have. Uh, at least you can't protect everything, your family, et cetera. It's much more difficult. Um, but but nevertheless, I mean, um, physically, you can't. it's not that easy to protect everyone when you are um, uh, talking about the war. But nevertheless, financially, we can all, uh, anybody who has a, a bit of savings can certainly protect it by go, owning gold and a bit of uh, silver also, you know, the... The, this is why we 25 years ago went into gold. We saw gold as the best protection against what, we, what was coming, the, against the risk. And, and the good thing is that you know is that if you hold gold, over, over time, every single currency has gone to zero without exception, over time, over thousands of years. But therefore, over time, gold always goes up because it's measured in worthless currencies that always goes to zero. Um, and therefore, it's such an easy game, such an easy uh, investment, uh, and still most people uh, don't understand it and don't hold it. Um, and you've got to be patient. It's not a, of course now it's all about instant gratification investments. But you know, if you hold it for the long term, you're always going to um, you're always going to maintain your purchasing power and do okay with with gold. That's why you should hold it. On that topic. Yeah, in the face of all of this turmoil that you've outlined so uh, interconnected and is is amplified by the derivatives complex that's built on top of it, you have a, a 
threefold statement about gold that I find provocative that I thought maybe you could expand on. One is gold will be your savior. You've already touched on that. The other second part of that is gold's real journey hasn't started yet. And the third part, perhaps the most distressing for most people is because when gold goes to the levels which I now feel certain it will, the quality of our lives will be considerably worse than today. Could you fill in uh, some of the gaps there? Yes. So, um, yeah, okay, the first one is we talked about the yeah, the, the 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 journey, as you say, because gold is only held by half a percent or, or, or half percent of world financial assets are in, in gold today. You know, the, the the and we've been into gold for 25 years as as a company and uh we've been growing every year, but it's still so minuscule. You know, we're there really to we want to we have a passion for helping people to to preserve wealth. Uh, that's really what we're, we're um, um, trying to do, but but you know so we have um, um, a, a obviously a group of dedicated investors from from around the world, you know a big group, uh, but no, and they're high net worth individuals. But but the, you know that's nothing compared to everybody that need, needs to protect themselves. But what I'm saying is since nobody has actually bought gold today, and gold is still at a very low level, you know the. Although we've been in it for 25 years, I you know, I tell my colleagues and I tell our clients that the, that the real move or the real journey in gold hasn't started yet. It's about to start now. And also technically, this this last cor- uh, correction that we saw uh, in in gold um, um, a couple of weeks ago, um, and when, or, or just over a week ago, really, um, that was the final correction of of a small correction when we're talking about remember uh, and I think now that the gold is uh, on its way to a lot higher levels um and remember gold is has been now consolid- consolidating in most currencies at the top at the peak in do- even in dollars at the peak or, okay it's not uh, it's, it's not much higher than it was in 2011-12 at that peak in dollars, because the dollar has been been strong tem- temporarily, in my view. Um, but you know, in all other currencies, gold has made a new high. So, so gold is cons- consolidating at a very high level, and and the next move, which is starting now, however fast it will be, it could be very fast. It's going to take us to highs that that no one can imagine, um, and. As the, the crowd always waits until it's, it's, it makes headline news uh, in, in, in papers and, and on television, you know, everybody will pile into gold, of course. And, and on top of that, as I said, sovereign governments will also have to hold gold as a reserve uh, asset. So, so that journey is just starting. And as I said, it will be a, a, a major move. Um, uh, and uh, sorry, what was your last point? Oh, you said when gold goes up to the levels you foresee, the quality of our lives will be considerably worse than today. So you said you tell your clients they mustn't wish for gold to go up substantially. Yes, absolutely right. I mean, that this is, you know, gold goes up for several reasons. But one is, of course, just because we measure it in, in money that goes down in value the whole time. So so just by printing more money, gold will go up automatically because the, the, we, we value it in money that, that fall, falls in value. Uh, uh, but the other thing is that the real catalyst for gold is very often that something, events happen, you know, major events. And, and here we have a potential major event of, 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 of global war um, uh, and that linked to, as I said, change in re- reserve assets in the, in the world. So, you know that that, that I'm I'm afraid that the, the, the high gold price that I, I could see in, in in coming years is going to be in a in a world that uh, is not going to be uh, easy or pleasant to live in. De- definitely. So, so that's why you know we shouldn't wish for high gold. We should just hold it as insurance. It's you know it's like when you buy fire insurance. You don't buy it for you because you wish your house to burn down. Just if it burns down, it's good to have. And here, the advantage of gold is that it's not just an insurance that you need to pay a premium for every year to renew. Gold holds its value better than any money or any investment throughout history. So it's a wonderful insurance to hold. Um, on, on top of that, it actually looks good too and shines. Uh, so... so um, Yes, uh, the and people will now wake up to that too. 
but as I said, it, it's going to be a bit late, and it's going to be at the time, as I said, when when there'll be a lot other problems than just worrying about finances. For people who would like to take advantage of your services that you provide at Matterhorn Asset Management, how can they find out more, and what services will they be able to uh, take advantage of? So, uh, uh, first of all, our our website is goldswitzerland.com, goldswitzerland.com. And this is, we really cater for high net worth and ultra high net worth individuals. And when there are, we have associated companies that deal with smaller investors. But the whole purpose is to, to the, for our, we help uh, investors to buy gold outside the banking system. Uh, and we help to, them to store it uh, in their name. They have access to their gold, etc. So we're, we are not uh, in any way, um, um, we're just uh, an, an intermediary, uh, but, uh, but not a, pr- a principal in this. Um, and so we have quite high levels of intra, entry um, vaults in Zurich and Singapore is four hundred thousand dollars, and in 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 our uh, Swiss uh, Alp Mountain Vault, which is the biggest private gold vault in the world, uh, there uh, there the minimum is five million. So so we do we understand that it's not for everybody, but as I said, there are other companies. Um, that that do this on on a different level that we are also associated with. So so that's what we do uh, for where well, we are in about ninety countries around the world um, in in that field. And obviously we do silver also, but uh, but gold is really the king of wealth preservation as far as we're concerned. We've been speaking with Egon von Greyers, the founder and chairman of Matterhorn Asset Management. Egon, thanks for coming on Liberty and Finance. Danica, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much.